Guys, look, strategy is about to be the most important video lesson you guys will ever get in Warzone 2. So start practicing now because realistically, the game is relatively simu similar. And this match here just shows how short-sighted players are, meaning they don't have a plan of action and they don't have a backup for their plan of action. You guys need to get your strategy together if you want to do anything productive in Warzone 2. With Warzone 2 on the horizon, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be wanting to submit your gameplay on this channel for me to review and break down to help you guys out and give you important tips and tricks. That's why I'm happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Outplayed. With Outplayed, you guys can go through and select all of your favorite games, allowing the program to automatically clip your best moments without you even having to think about it. And again, all you have to do is type in the game you wanna add, click it, and now this game will go ahead and automatically start bookmarking all of your kills, all of your assists, and all of your deaths. It highlights every time I get a kill. I got a down, and there it is. I got another down over here, there it is. And then I killed his teammate back to back, and there it is. This has saved me so much time and effort going through endless hours of footage. This program runs silently in the background and hardly uses any resources while it's going. Go ahead and utilize my link in the description below to download this program and allow it to run silently in the background on your device so you guys can capture your best moment by utilizing Outplayed to work for you. But anyway, guys, we're going to be breaking down in depth every single thing that we witness. My DPI and sense is messed up. Hold up. Wait, pause. Pause. I said pause. A DPI was thrown out of whack. I don't know what the hell is going on. I was on 1600. So it was on 800. Shit was wild. I don't like it. But again, guys, we're gonna be going in depth, breaking down every single fight, every single rotation, every single strategy. We're gonna go back to our roots of the videos, um, like we used to do when Verdance finally got released, when it finally came out, when Warzone was brand new. We're gonna go back to spectating videos, how we did then. Um, we had our fun, we picked a lot of fun, we had a blast, but now it's time to get serious because again, strategy and rotation will be more important in Warzone too. So let's get to it. Right off the bat, Spectate two players holding the top of peak. Now we gotta be careful whenever we're shooting off of peak, both of us, you gotta make sure you're at least scanning behind you every now and then that to make sure that nobody is pushing you for multiple reasons. One, everyone likes to get kills, right? Two, you're clearly both shooting, it's clearly duos. So again, they could go up there and surprise you. And three also, you got the helicopter up there. That's that's you know, that's usually what people want to go for. Dangerous situation. What doesn't kill you? He just selfs to the bottom right. We saw the blue face mask and luckily we we're able to get it. Now look, the enemy team did a, did a splendid job right there, jumping out, sending one of his teammates to jump out of the chopper. What happened with the helicopter right now was tragic. He chalked it. It was very, it was just poor piloting skills, but the strategy was still the same. This is a wombo combo deal when it comes with the helicopter strat, especially in duos, trios, or quads. If a helicopter's running around splatting people, what's everyone to be distracted by? Everyone will be distracted by the chopper. So the last thing they're gonna be doing when they're sitting there trying to shoot the chopper down is noticing if he dropped a teammate off or not. So then, it, oh, dude, it is wild right here. Hold up. I wasn't even gone for that. He's already down, he wouldn't our kill. We gotta get up this ridge. He's trying real quick, getting a little distracted. To bottom, bottom, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, another situation where he's going for an execute. It's not even his kill. Luckily, the enemy revealed himself. Very surprising. So a lot has happened in this short amount of time that we didn't get to talk about. Um, again, one, rewinding to the helicopter. The helicopter play was great. And the enemy jumped out of it. So while we were distracted by the chopper, he was able to go around and get the kills. The problem was chopper already splattered our homie which meant it was a 2v1. So when the enemy jumped out of the chopper, instead of focusing again on the execute, he should have been focused on us. Big mistake we see from him, from the guy we're spectating. It's a common trend in Warzone. Now this game volume is really loud for me. So if I'm screaming, you're just gonna have to win those. Uh, and, then, and then again, going back to killing people, when they're Nox, they're not even yours. If they're not self-resing, why distract yourself with them? Why waste ammo? Why force a, re uh, a reload from yourself? Because you're, again, you're wasting the ammo. Why waste that time? Why attract attention to yourself? So many things could have gone wrong in that situation. Luckily, there was a lot more fighting going around just, just our two teams. But again, dude, stop focusing on down players. Stop it. If his teammate's competent and he's close by and you don't know where he's at, he's going to shoot you. You got to focus on the... 
most important, the biggest threat of a target. And I guarantee the biggest threat's not the guy that's not, not even trying to self res. I promise you that. Always be aware of his ass, just in case he does pop a self res. But again, scan the surrounding. I, I'm gonna be honest, I got no idea where the fuck that came from. There we go, we got a live ping from our teammate. Missed opportunity with the shots. We're able to go ahead and help out a teammate, and there it is. More shots coming back from our back left. On the rooftop, we spot them. Gonna finish our plates. And again, popping the reload. Now, at this position here, I'm gonna wanna try to go ahead and get the money from my dead teammate as well as the guy he killed. That might possibly open up a buyback play that could put us in a good spot. And look, I'm not taking anything away from this guy's gameplay, but again, I'd rather I'd rather get my teammate back up just in case some shit goes astray. It is a 1v2 right now. And we run a huge chance of just getting stacked. Very awkward how he came through the door. A little bit of lag spike right there. And, then, and some nice body shoot. And love that shit from Choli TV. Um, and again, dude, playing your life. So these guys were camped up. And no matter what the skill level, you know, when you're in, when you're going inside of a building that they're stacked in, no matter what it is, two or three or quads, you're running a risk, especially if you're solo. Um, again, I would have broken across. They were distracted. They didn't know where you were. They knew you were still around because it wasn't a team wipe, but they didn't know exactly where. Um, I got that by how they were rotating and the fact they weren't even scanning over here. So again, I would have made a run to the bodies, try to get enough money to get our teammate up. All we needed was 1400 bucks. That was a missed opportunity. And also again, the buy station's right next to us. So just a quick boop, boop, and you're good to go. Um, then you can re-engage your fight, help your teammate get a ship back. Again, you want to play for the longevity of the match. Don't just full send, especially so early on. Um, but right now, here we are. So moving on to Choli TV and his homie Carlos. They've got not really much they can work with. We've got a recon strat. We've covered that a billion times. So you know how that goes. Um, we have money for UAV. This is the first mistake I'm seeing is not paying attention to your money. Now, we could get self reses or we could get UAVs regardless. You don't want to be sitting on eight grand for no reason at all. We have our Lodi, so we're clearly not saving for a Lamborghini. Um, I would like, well, I mean, it's too late now. This game's about to die, but I would like to see more bounties and big game bounties throughout the map as opposed to a thousand supply runs and a thousand most wanteds. There's no reason for there to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine, ten. 10 most wanted bounties on this map in this small little area of all of Caldera. It's actually kind of crazy. Now I'm very curious to see how bounties and all these uh, little systems are gonna work in Warzone 2. Very excited to get my hands on. Um, hopefully they release a beta. I don't, I don't really foresee that happening, but they might. See what they go with it. I went with the self res play and you know, I'm not against it, dude, do you? I definitely prefer UAV for multiple reasons. One, we can figure out our next rotation. Two, we can figure out if anyone's near us, right? We've got to cross in a vulnerable area. This is dangerous, this is dangerous. And even if you go to the balloon, again, helicopter, that's going to be dangerous as well. Uh, you're going to need a lot more than that, homie. He precisioned it. All right, well, that'll work. That's, I mean, that's how it's done, really. So Jolie's jet, I don't know what the hell we're looking at, I'm gonna be honest. Anyway, we've got a lot of money. You already know what it is. Let's see what they end up doing. Now look, a lot of people pick up these briefcases, you know, just on accident. I definitely wanna encourage everyone to stop using these damn things. Um, every time I spectate a team use the briefcase, it always forces them to rotate in a spot they don't wanna rotate to. And again, this is the biggest threat. I was worried about it too whenever we were rotating to the balloon. Let's see how they play this. Now look, we have an advanced UE up. There's one team over here. And notice how we haven't picked up pace. We should be instantly going to the balloon and instantly diverting to storage town, to airfield, any area. We could waste our time killing these guys, but they got the high ground. They're not gonna have the chopper for long. They got the high ground. They don't wanna come play the game. So why waste time? with them when you can feast in all these other areas. Now, if you want to play slow, passive, the safer route, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad team to push. Let's see what they end up doing though. 
Oh, we have blue going in. He needs to hug that right hand side. I don't like the fact that we're going to try to full. Yeah, yeah, over here. I, I must say, I didn't like the fact that we were going to the zip, but also that hang time, the enemies had a good chance to spot our parachute. So I'm, I, I'm not a fan of it at all. The initial just full sending right to him. You've got to know the terrain. You've got to know what you can make and what you can't make with the balloons. I'm not sure where these guys are, and let's discuss that as well. So we we got an advanced UAV. In Caldera, I was or in Verdansk, I was really a huge fan of, uh, of advanced UAVs, but now with the transit system with balloons, advanced aren't really that necessary. Um, I would have much rather. Oh my God, I would have much rather bought a UAV, threw it up. And then us have a UAV and him have a UAV. Now, if you didn't just see, there was a guy down here in the tunnel. Again, just noticing a little bit of movement. You'll probably see him hit the balloons to the right-hand side. But we're so tunnel vision on God knows what. We really can't see much. And I'm getting a weird pixelation on my screen. Yeah, ever since they started doing these weekly playlist updates or however often it is, the graphics for me. I don't know if you guys have experienced this too, but they're just, I don't know what the hell's going on with my shit. But again, not noticing the movement to the tunnel could be crucial as well. Now, we don't know where that came from. We've got to rotate in the next few seconds. And I don't like the fact that we're kind of just moving away. I don't really know what the hell that was, I'm going to be honest. Does the Grawl even have recoil? <laughs> All right, got to pick this big game bounty. Come on. How are you going to mark the bounty and not pick up the big game bounty? I didn't make any damn sense. Come on, man. Pick it up. I mean, these guys clearly love advanced UAVs. I'd go ahead and pick up that big game. Now, look, again, talking about the advanced UAV versus the three UAV system. If we would have threw up a UAV, it would have marked these guys here regardless, right? All we had to do is come here like we are. Throw up the UAV, and that knock could have been prevented because we would have seen those guys and where they were at. And now that we've lost them again, we could have, well, not anymore. Spoke too soon. We could throw up another UAV because I do feel like there's two teams here. Again, I saw the parachute float down to the tunnel. Then we have these guys in front of us. Let's see if they end up. I nah, don't waste that shit, bro. This is another instance of getting caught up in your binoculars from your streaks instead of paying attention to the zip. Now look, we gotta start thinking about an escape too. We're bringing a lot of attention to ourselves and we need to hit this balloon. This is our only hope right here. I wouldn't say two tunnel on this loot. That shit don't matter. You notice a lot of panic in Choli's movement. He's not really sure what to do. A lot of hesitation. And again, anything else but getting out of here is irrelevant. Now, where they're going to go, that's going to be an interesting an interesting site. we got a buy station on the edge right here. We've got a buy station on the balloon right here. And we've got a buy station on the edge right here. These are going to be hot areas. I do anticipate enemy team being right here um, as well as here, as well as here. So let's see what, ha let's see what ends up happening. But um, I don't foresee us landing peacefully, to be honest. There's a chance, but I highly doubt it, especially with this hang time that we have. All right, getting shot from the balloon team, not surprised at all. I was just about to talk about us being in our parachute like Mary Poppins. Notice how blue, he knew he was going. He committed to the hill. He made a decision. Now he's in within good range to start executing some kind of move. Choli was kind of going one way, then another, then another, and then finally we got started start getting shot and we went back towards our teammate, but guy falling on top of us right now. We are panic shooting. We are trying our best to get the hell out of here. We don't like this game at all. Frags coming down, more things coming down. We're out open, trying our best. What is that for, my guy? Shoot him back, bro, shoot him. I don't care if it worked, don't ever do that. The, wow. Okay, so a few things with this fight here. One, shame on the enemy for letting us get away when we just were doing nothing. Um, two, I mean, again, look, Choli got the knock and he ends up getting the kill, maybe. He had to gotten shot from behind. No way to have an angle on us. Um, 
again, he got the knock, but <laughs> so many opportunities we were staring at the enemy. We just kept doing this weird movement thing and we weren't shooting back. You've got to understand whenever you witness any of us players that have movement actually use a movement, notice how we're not just going to sit there and zigzag while we're getting shot point blank. We're going to try our best to shoot back. Um, we might whip it right, whip it left, maybe whip it a third time, but that's rare. Unless we're really toying with an AI, there's no reason for anybody to sit there and do all that crap he was doing. He ended up getting very blessed with that precision. Very blessed. Um, but still, the, the end game, the end story result was still the same. He ended up dying. He never got the kill. He didn't even get the knock, I don't believe. So, um regardless whether it would have got the kill or not still a very very bad play and again i want to just point out no shots to trolley at all but there is a lot of panic in his gameplay i would imagine and we'll see in the video results when i'm posting the stats but i would imagine carlos probably has a higher kd right, as far as that was concerned we kind of ego challenged that your boy carlos ego challenge ego sent the shit out of that um, we're on the edge of the zone. We're trying to go for a fight. I get it. You want to get a kill. You want to get your weapons, but you got to play that tent. Um, even though it's not hard cover, it's just concealment. It's more of an angle. It's a little bit safer. You can disguise yourself with the concealment um, than just landing on a crate and just, e again, ego sending. Oh, yeah, guys. Um, How about them Cowboys, too? One of my viewers actually on here on uh, YouTube streams. If you guys haven't been popping by the YouTube streams, we've been starting to stream on YouTube here lately. Um, but one of my viewers actually called it. He actually called the exact score. It's mind blowing. So right now, from what we see from these guys, I'm definitely oh 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 woo whoa! All right. All right, this is an example, and again, no shots, just constructive criticism. This is an example of just panic shooting. You see an enemy, you shoot, you forget that there's 23 other players on the map, and you have no idea what the hell's going on. Um, even if we were the only two players on the map, dude, there's no reason for us to shoot at him. He had no idea we were behind him. We could have closed the gap. We could have got to a safer distance, a distance to reward our skill. And I, and I say this, meaning if you guys are not good close range, I'm not that good close range. I'm not trash, but I'm not that good close range. You guys watch my gameplay, you know I'm a, I'm a better sniper than anything. I'm a ranged guy, so I know if I'm going to be close range fighting, I'm going to have to be playing my top tier A game. I'm going to try my best to hit the enemy by surprise because if I go to ego challenge an enemy close range, there's a good chance he's going to be able to outtrack me because, again, tracking is just not my forte when it comes to close range fights, um, especially when players have movement. And I say all that to say if you're struggling in a certain situation, you, you need to find a way to get into a better situation if that makes any sense so again you saw his aim right you saw how bad it was he clearly needs to be closer to players he should have just approached from behind when he wasn't looking easy claps all right this is kind of questionable right here we're just kind of holding the doorway he thinks they're on the roof i agree Maybe. I don't know. The audio's a little muffled. He's definitely above us. Okay. So we need to go up here and figure out what the hell's going on. So right now what we're doing is we're, we're blinding ourselves because we're too afraid to play. Now the guy's on top of the rooftop of our building. It's going to be a hard fight because he's got a great angle and a great head he could play to outshoot both of us. It's a dangerous fight. It is. But we have to make up our minds to do something because we're losing a lot of intel. We've got people shooting here that we can't really get a shot on. We got people that are gonna have to cross here soon, maybe. We need to start identifying where the rest of the enemies are. Now, why do we have to identify where they're at? Well, let's just say the circle dives to the north. Let's say the circle favors this side and we're over here. Uh-oh, then what do we have to do? Well, we have to make an educated guess on how we're gonna play this circle and push across safely, right? Do we go this way? I don't fucking know because we haven't looked over there, right? This is the whole important part of gaining intel at the end and why you shouldn't just trap yourself a building, cover up the little snuggie, and uh and play terrified. Oh don't don't do it. It's not worth the fight right now. We oh we don't have the plates for this. I don't like, even though he's getting the knock, I don't like the fact that we keep fighting this because again, we're wasting the little bit of plates we have. I'm taking fire. Got 
And again, my biggest worry is come rotation. And this is how I always think in a battle royale, especially in game, beginning, middle, whatever. In game situations like this, I'm always planning for worst case scenario. Cause in my head, if I have to rotate, I wanna know exactly where the fuck I gotta go. Exactly. Like right now, the little intel we have, we have a team here, we have a team here, and it got, apparently there's a guy above us. So in my head, that means there are two enemy teams left. They're probably somewhere over here, but it's definitely gonna be an easier rotation to rotate wide this way than have to confront all three of these teams over here. Does that make any sense? So right now with where these guys are at, with what they've robbed themselves of intel wise, they need to start rotating through the fucking tent and going wide with the zone. Now, why am I saying go wide with the zone? Well, that window of opportunity is closing because the zone is now moving in because we wasted time. So. If we would have wrapped wide, we would have had a huge distance between the enemies and us. They'd have to shoot a long, long, far distance in order to kill us. But since we're waiting, 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 what's gonna happen? Well, eventually we're gonna have to leave this little corner. I thought the game crashed. We're gonna have to leave this corner and we're gonna be closer to the enemies, right? Most players are very, very bad long range. I would definitely jump out and challenge him, bro. We just lost out on that kill. Allowing him to close the gap. Now he's at the building. Plate on the balcony too, which we definitely need to grab. Also, again, we gotta grab plates because we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go out in the open no matter how you look at this. There's no way in fuck the next zone's gonna favor this little sliver. It's impossible. It's, there's not, not even a 0, 0, 0. 0. 0. 0.0001 chance. And look, to be 100% honest, all these teams should be worried about how to get across. They should have been worried. Again, now that the circle's getting smaller, their opportunity for crossing in the far distance is gone. So in my eyes, so far, we only know of one team over here and they're looking pretty fucking good. There's probably, there's a team on account of force that might be over there with them, but these two teams, assuming there are there, they are there, there's zero reason, zero reason why they lose this game. So again, look at the next zone. Who's gonna be safe? Do you think there's any shot in, in hell? This team's gonna win, let's get a vote right now. It's rhetorical, hell no. Absolutely not, Th these dudes are dead. We're dead, the guys under us are dead, the guys above us are dead, everyone over here is dead. And I'm pretty sure there's a team on top of our building just because I have no idea where these guys went. But again, they don't know, we don't know because they didn't look. You can play passive all you want, but you've got to gather intel. Guy sitting in the window, didn't even see him. Orange staying in as well. We're getting cluster, great cluster from the enemy in this situation right here. And again, this is a perfect example of the title of the video, short-sightedness. So many people worried about the teams that's the closest when they're really not the biggest danger. The biggest danger is the guys about to gatekeep everybody. Really laggy server. This is unfortunate. I think the game's about to crash at the end. Could you imagine? Let's switch players. That dude's. I don't know what the hell is going on. Ooh, ooh. But your boys over here, they're sitting in the building. Now, honestly, it's kind of questionable. I believe there's still a point. You heard him self res, homie. Why did you die with your binoculars in your hands? You heard him self res. You heard him. Now I said this whole time, again, I said this whole time, you need to play it up, 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 play it up. This is a big, this is a big L because he's gonna be plating. You're not gonna be plating. Again, short sighted, not playing the entire situation, blinding ourselves, not picking up the extra plates and plating. We need to be looking. We have to see where he rotates to so we can make educated decisions. Cause now we don't know and he gets his butt by surprise. Guys, this video is a perfect, perfect match for the title. Literally short sighted. 
everyone just worried about what's going on directly in front of them. They're not worried about the zone. They're not worried about clusters. They're not worried about bombers. They're not worried about rotations. They're not worried about who's going to be gatekeeping us. You have to have a plan of action for your plan of action. There needs to be a backup. If you dive into 1v4, what's your escape? If you're going to be playing the edge of the zone, what if it shifts to the north? What if it shifts to the east? You have to have these things planned out. The reason that we're able to get so many wins is because we can physically... We have alternate plans to our alternate plans, and it seems like a lot, but we, some, we, we're at the point we don't even think about it. And I'm not saying that's a flex. When you guys start practicing this more and more and more, you guys don't have to think about this at all. Yo, GG's, guys. GG's, boys. GG's. And look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys right now. I said the whole time, I was like, there's no reason for the teams across the field to lose, and they did. Every team we spectated in that situation literally had no plan of action. They had no idea what to do should shit fall through and you know a lot of people don't play with that mindset of, of of planning and prepping because most fps you don't have to but i'm telling you right now warzone 2 if players do not have their strategy to the t in warzone 2 they're gonna struggle you're gonna struggle more than you have with warzone 1. that's the vibe i'm getting from the game especially with the multiple circles breaking off and again i'll go more into detail once we actually get maybe an alpha but i'm telling you right now when warzone 2 releases these are going to be the most important videos uh that you've ever watched in warzone space period strategy and rotations will be the most crucial thing in warzone 2 mark my words but guys make sure you're out there not making those mistakes tightening it up and coming up with a backup plan no matter what also again guys big big mistake i see from everyone stop blinding yourselves stop closing the doors and hiding in intel is everything in game intel is everything the entire game but especially in game wide rotating across the field is way better than waiting for the circle to get smaller and rotating with everyone else you saw the outcome of that it was a cluster and what's just crazy is literally not one team pre-rotated there were four four teams by us including the team we're spectating four teams total not one of them pre-rotated not one which is mind-blowing but guys again i really hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something new if you did um please share it with a homie and don't forget to drop a like let's get this video to 300 likes boys but until next time man y'all have a good one and good luck in warzone